How's it going YouTube? My name is Sherbert and in today's video we're going to be talking about 8 tips and tricks that players may not know about inside of Super People. Super People is now in early access and with it comes a whole wave of new players who are looking to learn the game mechanics as well as more advanced players looking to improve their gameplay and climb the leaderboards. So whether you're brand new or a seasoned veteran, here are 8 tips and tricks you may not know about inside of Super People. Tip number one is that you can shoot down doors instead of opening them for an easier shot on your opponent. There are many objects in Super People that can be destroyed by shooting. Fences, rock walls, and doors can all be shot down and destroyed. This is great for if you need a speedy getaway or gain a better line of sight on an enemy. Because not many know that bullets can open doors, you can catch your opponent off guard for a surprise attack. Now it's important to know that only wooden fences and doors can be shot down. Don't go all Rambo and start blasting metal doors or fences. Those are permanent and won't be breaking no matter how many rounds you put into them. Having the ability to peek into a room without being caught in the doorway is a great way to keep yourself safe while catching your opponent unprepared. So when in doubt, just start blasting. Tip number two is that you can stealth walk by holding control. This will slow your walk or crouch down into a crawl, making you slow moving, but also will make it harder for your enemies to hear you. This will allow you to sneak up on any unexpecting player or allow you to listen to your surrounding audio better without confusing your footsteps for your enemies. This is a very situational tip and you may not use it often, but it's better to have it and not need it because you never know when you have to go full Assassin's Creed on some dude and go for the stealth kill. Here's an example of crouching at normal speed versus the stealth crouch. Tip number three is that you can wiggle while reviving a knocked or down player. This is great because it keeps your head constantly moving and reduces your chances of getting one tapped by a sniper and will minimize your chances of being knocked right alongside your buddy. Make your movement sporadic and unpredictable, but don't stop moving. You can also revive a knocked player as they're crawling into zone or behind cover. But this will require a lot of communication because if you strafe too far from one another, you'll cancel the revive and have to start all over. So make sure your comms are on point and get your friend back into the fight. Tip number four is that you can reload or use a healing item while using certain ultimates. Many ultimates and super people can be used defensively and can allow you to stay safe long enough to heal and then continue the fight. Strike Force, Seeker, Shotgun Master, Teleporter, Marine, SWAT, Firearms Expert, Nuclear, and Demolisher can all use the ultimates while healing or reloading. Each ultimate can help buy you a few precious seconds or help you shake your opponent from chasing you by relocating or breaking their line of sight. For example, Strike Force can dash while healing, providing not only distance, but can also jump into cover and start returning fire once their healing is all done. Or SWAT and Marine, who unleash giant area of effect ultimates that make visibility almost impossible. Not many players will want to go face first into their ultimate to chase after somebody, so use your ultimates whenever necessary to keep you alive and in the match longer. Tip number five is that you can tell how many classes are left in the lobby and just how many of those classes are left. This can be found on the drop down menu in your map while in game. It's default to close, but it can show you how many and what classes are still alive. This can help you formulate a plan of action and help you decide how best to deal with the circle rotation. For example, if you see that the lobby still has a few snipers left, you'll want to make sure that you're constantly moving as to not give anyone an easy headshot while waiting for the next circle to close. Or if you see a teleporter, expect a player to be in a high and hard to reach place. Much like how each circle and map size are different, so too are the classes left at the end of the game. So make sure you're not surprised when it comes down to the final players. Tip number six is to start pinging the specific crafting items you need to upgrade your gear. By pressing the magnifying glass in your inventory, you can look specifically for the item you need to progress your weapon or armor further in the crafting tree. This is a handy tool because the crafting item you may need doesn't always show up on your minimap or on your screen, making it difficult to find. This is a quick and effective way to level up your crafting without having to go on a scavenger hunt. This will help you clear through houses and compounds quickly. If the item isn't there, you can simply avoid it and move on to the next compound minimizing your looting time and increasing your chances of getting better items. Tip number seven is that both rare and heroic armor have a random perk that will give you some sort of defensive bonus. This is only for purple and orange armor, but both crafted and found items will have a perk associated with them. These perks are random and can vary from anything like plus 50 HP while down, take negative 5% explosion damage, or have the ability to recover additional armor durability. There are multiple perks that can be associated with your armor, which perks you get are completely random, but will provide some sort of bonus helping you out in the long run. Rare armor will only receive one buff, 
while heroic armor will receive two. So be sure to check out which buffs you get on your purple and orange armor. And lastly, tip number eight is more of a suggestion than it is anything, but it wasn't until a few days ago that I was told by a friend in chat that you can preload your personal supply crate for every game by accessing it in the lobby. This saves you the hassle of having to preload your personal supply every game. Instead, you can just load it up one time in the main menu and not have to worry about it unless you want to bring something specific to your class, like extended SMG mag for Strike Force or a silencer for Marine. That's it for this video. Those were eight tips and tricks that you may not know about inside of Super People. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section down below if there are any other videos you'd like me to make. Also, I do stream right here right on YouTube, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I would love to have you guys come in and say hi. I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all have a great day and stay super.